Residential accommodation is our next fringe benefit that we'll look at. So as you can imagine, basically this is where an employer gives an employee a place to stay and does not charge them enough or gives it to them for free. So basically your employer says to you, here you go, here's a flat for you to go and stay in. So first up, there will be no value for this fringe benefit. In other words, the employee will not be taxed if the employer provides the accommodation to the employee inside or outside of South Africa if the employee is required to be away from the usual place of residence. So you live in Cape Town and your employer tells you that you need to go to Bloemfontein which is not in Cape Town, it's out of town and it gives you um, a place to stay there for work for free, so it doesn't give you an allowance, gives you a place to stay, you won't be taxed. Your employer tells you are South African, and your employer tells you to go and do work in England, and it gives you a place to stay there, so outside of South Africa, you won't be taxed on it. Right, and this is usually if the employee is a resident. If the employer provides accommodation to a non-resident, then there will also be no f value if it is for a period of less than two years after the arrival in South Africa, or if the employee is physically present in South Africa for less than 90 days in the current year. Okay, so let's just take it a step at a time. There will be no value. In other words, it's tax-free if it goes to a non-resident. But then the following requirements must be met. The non-resident must be away from the usual place of residence. So imagine that you are a South African employer. You have an employee in England that comes into South Africa to, to, Africa to come and work here for a bit and you give him a place to stay. That's what we're talking about. That employee must not be in South Africa for more than two years after they arrive. So they can only be here for less than two years. Or if it's less than 90 days in the current year, it's also in any case no value. Okay, not, I've never really seen those guys. Then they say, if the employee is a non-resident, there will be a value. So even if these requirements are met, if the following is, yeah, is, uh, is uh, relevant. If the employee was physically present in South Africa for more than 90 days preceding the date of arrival in South Africa for work. Remember, so they had to come to South Africa to work. So if they were already in South Africa for more than 90 days, so more than three months before the, um, you give them a place to stay, then they'll be taxed. Or if the cash equivalent, which we'll see now to calculate, exceeds 25,000 rands times the number of months. So if they for no reasons here for 10 months times 25,000, if you do the calculation, so that's 250,000. If you do the calculation of the cash equivalent, and that's more than 250,000, the employee, this non-resident should be taxed. Again, guys, I've never seen them ever test this. Right. So here are all the requirements. Well, the three different situations. But paragraph 9 tells us how to determine what the cash equivalent is. Now, first thing I want you to see in all of these there's a formula. The only one where you use a formula or actual cost, the lower of the two, is when the employer does not own the property. So, the formula is the most important. So let's look at the different situations. Situation one, the employee has an interest in the property. You must use the formula. What does this mean? So for example, Let's say your employer gives you a place to stay, a flat, and says you can stay here for free if the employer owns it. But then also says to you, you have the option in two years' time to buy this property. Or you own the property. Okay, so listen to this. This is also possible. Let's say you own the property. You rent it to your employer. And your employer then tells you to stay in it for free. Now it sounds strange, but remember guys, they are, these things are possible. It, it's not that common in big companies, but if I have a small little private company, I'm the only shareholder, people do these type of things. Right, use the formula. If the employer owns the property, use the formula. If the employer does not own the property, use the lower of the formula or the actual cost. Okay, so what is the formula? The formula, you can find it in your act as well. A minus B times C over 100 times D over 12. Okay, so first thing is A. A is the remuneration proxy. This is an amount that will be given to you in the exam. The idea of what a remuneration proxy is basically is the previous year's salary that you earned. 
the employee earns. Okay, there's some re requirements also, so that's why it's given to you. B is an abatement amount, so it gets deducted. Now, this amount gets updated every year, that's why I haven't given it to you here. You can find it in your Cycle Student Handbook, the latest one, or in the tax rates and tax tables document on the student platform. This should also be provided for you in the exam. What I want you to write down here, though, is the following. This amount is equal to the tax threshold. doesn't tell you that in paragraph 93, but it always is. And the reason why I want you to write this down is if they don't give you, say, residential accommodation fringe benefit or paragraph 93 abatement of 79,000, you can also use the amount of the tax threshold which they should give you. Right. C is over 100. So that is a percentage. So this can either be 19, 18, or 17. So can you see higher? The higher it is, the higher the fringe benefit is. Let's start with 19. This is the highest. This is when you get everything. This is where your employer gives you a furnished place. So there's furniture in it. And they pay for power and fuel. Power and fuel is water and electricity, basically. Or uh, water, uh, sorry, electricity and things like gas. Right. And there's at least four rooms. Four rooms, guys, not four bedrooms. If you have a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom, it's four rooms. Right, so 18 is if they give you there's at least four rooms again, and it's either furnished, but there's no power and fuel, or it's unfurnished, but there's power and fuel. Then you use 18. So you get some, but not everything. And 17 is any other situation. So what's the other situations? Where it's, there's no furniture and there's no power and fuel, or where there's less than four rooms, and there's power and fuel or and furniture. So if it does meet one of these two, then it's 17. And D is the number of months. Now what I want you guys to see, which is interesting, I just want you to note, is that the value of the property has no effect. Okay, so what I mean by this is, let's say you give a CEO of the company a flat to stay in that has a market value of 600,000 rands. Okay. And this is say for both of these, four room, for both my example, four rooms plus power plus furniture. Right, so everything is given. And then there's a secretary. The secretary you give a castle to with a market value of 20 million. I know this is obviously just um, silliness, but I want you to understand. And there's also, well, let's say this one has a hundred rooms <laughs> plus power and furniture. The CEO has a remuneration proxy of 10 million rands a year, and the secretary has a remuneration proxy of 500,000 rands a year. Okay, so the CO will be 10 million, we're doing this formula, A minus, so this is, I'm going to say here guys, assume B equals, this is not the correct amount, I'm just saying assume. Okay, 100,000 times 19 over 100, and let's just say it was for the entire year. Okay, so that is the, the first one over there. Okay, so the value is 1.881 million. And for the secretary, it is 500,000 minus 100 minus 19 over 100 minus 12 over 12. Seventy-six thousand. So although the CEO in this case gets a flat of six hundred thousand and the secretary gets a castle of twenty million, the secretary has a uh, fringe benefit cash equivalent of seventy-six thousand and the CEO of almost two million. So you can see.
has nothing to do with the value of the property, it has to do with the value of the remuneration. So basically, the more you earn, the less it's necessary for your employer to give you a place to stay. That's the kind of the idea. So that's why you get penalized more.